Hey everyone, Rayo here, and today I'm bringing you a guide on how to be good in Guild Wars 2. Guild Wars 2 is a game like no other. It has great open world content as well as some more difficult content like raids. When it comes to Guild Wars 2 though, it's very important that no matter what content you're into, you must be the very best and prove it by asserting your dominance, and you do that by being really good. It doesn't matter if you're actually good or not, but what matters is what people think you are, and today I'm going to be giving you a few pointers on how to help with that. The first step to being good is adopting the language of the highly experienced. It's a forbidden language that they don't teach you in the tutorial. It's actually a hidden mastery track that doesn't display with your mastery rank, but with your actual prowess, and it's only learnable once you reach a specific level of ability. No one actually knows what this level is. Honestly, some people don't even realize how good that they are, but if you have an eye for it, you'll be able to identify who's really good and who's really bad. What I've noticed is that the language consists of the following keywords and phrases, but note that a couple of them have bad words and since I'm actually still working on being good, I haven't earned the right to say the actual bad words yet, so I replaced them with something more appropriate in relation to my skill level. Anyways, here they are. LOL, LMAO, GG, Pepega, Easy Clap, Poggers, Omega LOL, which is only usable by highly experienced people, and some phrases like learn to heck and rotate, learn your heck and class, you heck and suck, my team or pug heck and sucks, everything heck and sucks, noobs are idiot, or more derogatory variations, and then finally, Twitch and better TTV emotes. Out of this list, I would say that Twitch and better TTV emotes is probably the most common identifier for a super good player. But the real takeaway here is not the keywords themselves, but using them in a way to display how beneficial your attitude towards others really is. Which brings me to step two, your attitude. The best attitude or the meta attitude to adopt here is actually never taking responsibility for your own actions. Remember that your shortcomings are actually everyone else's fault and it's none other than your responsibility to constantly remind them of that. Everyone in a group has a specific job and there definitely needs to be someone there holding everyone else accountable and pointing out their flaws. This role really isn't easy. It's actually really hard and people just don't get that. It takes a lot of effort to focus on what everyone else is doing, and it's even pretty honorable that you would let your ability slip in order to bless them with your perspective on how bad they're doing. They should actually be grateful. Unfortunately though, you will come across people who will constantly rebuke you by saying things like, you're the only one who dies, you're going into mid solo versus three people on their point and dying over and over, and even my favorite, your DPS is half of our druids and you're playing DPS, so stop talking. And honestly, they could have a point, but what matters is they actually don't, so stick to your guns, flame them by telling them how bad they are, type GG good luck on finishing this LMAO, and finally, leave the group. The one exception is when you're in PvP. You can't actually leave the group, so instead, just AFK at home base and type slash dance or slash sit or jump around. If you're in ranked PvP, you can technically log out and save people the loss of pips, but if you're going to be good, you have to adopt the mentality that if you're going down, you're taking everyone down with you. Remember, to be good, you have to neglect other people's feelings, abilities, and perspectives, even if they are better than you and have the stats proving so. The actual good people in this game just know that they're good and don't need proof of it. Some might say that the proof is in the pudding, but honestly, pudding is for people who are insecure. Lastly, we have Fashion Wars. The true metagame is to participate in Fashion Wars. You can't actually enjoy Guild Wars 2 without looking super fly. And also remember that being good is totally reliant on what people think of you, and there's no better way to convince them of how good you are other than by looking the part. Keep in mind though, if you are to be good, there are a few meta loadouts for Fashion Wars. The most popular being the human female. It doesn't actually matter if you're a girl in real life or not, what matters is that people think you are. If you choose a human female, any armor combo that you choose that is form fitting or revealing is enough to convince people that you are super good. Bonus points if you convince them that you're a girl IRL when you're actually a dude. The next loadout is more specific to PvP, but it is the male heavy armor class. This one has a choice of Revenant, Guardian, and Warrior, though most super good people play the high skill cap class called Warrior. This loadout has a very specific look, which is highly flashy, godly, or something along the lines of I'm the chosen one. The big key here is to make sure that you're hella charged with testosterone and pumped up on either energy drinks or pre-workout, and to basically charge into every fight like you're Leonidas from 300. In PvP, it really doesn't matter what you bring so long as you have Rampage as your elite. Just make sure you immediately use it when engaging every single fight and constantly knock everyone down, and then when you kill them, stand over their body and stow your greatsword. This is the most direct and effective way of asserting your dominance. Our last loadout is gender, race, and class specific. Playing this loadout is more niche, but is really only played by people who are legitimately top tier great players. 
You cannot be wrong under any circumstance while using this loadout. The top tier meta loadout is a warrior male assert.